Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah. إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد the, the Muslim Ummah is facing the challenge that everybody is aware of what's happening in Palestine. And as Muslims, we know the hadith that Rasulullah said, عجب لأمر المؤمن إن أمره له كله خير إن أصابه خير شكر فكان خير الله وإن أصابه شر صبر فكان خير الله Rasulullah talking about amazed the mu'min is in case that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you something good in your opinion you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if something bad in your opinion you show patience and you patience and you become patient and this will be good for you and Muslim yantaqil ma bayna hali shukri wa sabr Muslim all the time if you go through your life and any human life you always between two phases sabr and shukr patient and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
also the, the, the calamity that our Ummah facing will keep uh, the case of Palestine alive. Because subhanAllah, every time, sometimes people forget something happens and then what we do, we remember. And we educate our uh, families and our kids. And the new generation carry the flag, carry the torch to the next generation and so on. So alhamdulillah, something maybe bad in our opinion, but it's good uh, 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 in between. Something, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows and you don't know. Inshallah today I will just go through uh, uh, two perspectives, how to uh, uh, understand and educate ourselves and our families about the Palestinian case. And I'm sure many of you know that. Remind, because a reminder will benefit the believers. From a religious perspective, this uh, issue happened actually 4,000 years ago. When our father Ibrahim وسلم, moved from Iraq all the way to Palestine. And uh, in Palestine, he had two children or two kids, Ismail and Ishaq. So Ismail and Ishaq actually was born in Palestine. And then Allah SWT commanded Ibrahim to take Ismail to Mecca to start new uh, tribe there, a new family. And then Ishaq have Yaqub, Yaqub has Yusuf as you know. And then after many years, uh, Yusuf, because of the plot with his brothers, he went to Egypt for the story, you know, in, in the Quran. And then uh, it, it seemed that at that time they have a global starving and everybody moved to Egypt looking for food and uh, grains and so on. So Yaqub and his children, and they say they were around 70 people only, 70 individuals who moved from Palestine to uh, Mesut, to Egypt. And then Bani Israel, children of Yaqub, you know, they are increased in numbers. And uh, we have Musa, alayhi born for Bani Israel. So the, the, the Rasul of Yahud, the messenger of Jewish, actually was not born in Palestine. He was born in Egypt. Our father was born in, in Iraq for Muslim, Christian, and Jews, born in Iraq. The, the Rasul, of Yehud actually was not born in Palestine. And this is where the religious claim, when they said Muslims, you're bringing the religious aspect into a political conflict. We should not, to, you know, separate politics from religion. Actually, we are not. They claim that Ibrahim, Yehudi, or Nasrani, and this is why the Quran replied to them, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا وَلَا كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمٍ Ibrahim was, was not a Jew, neither a Christian. And he was not born even in Palestine, he was born in Iraq. And then, you know, the conflict between Musa, Bani Israel, and Pharaoh, and they moved, running away from Pharaoh, they went to Sinai, and they were lost for 40 years, and actually Musa died there. Musa والسلام, did not enter Palestine, and his graveyard was a few miles away from Jerusalem or Quds. And then, actually, for the first time, the word Yehud, which is the follower of Musa, entered Palestine in the year 1650 BC. At that time, they entered Palestine with Yusha ibn Nun, Nabi, a prophet, which is a Fata, the other name is Fata Musa in Surah Al Kahf. He was uh, the young boy uh, serving Musa. But actually, he, in, he is the one that entered Palestine with the Jewish people for the first time as group, as community. And then they stayed in Palestine in two eras. One era was the Ahd al Qudar. The era of judges, where we have 12 judges, every time one judge die, the other judge will rule them for 150 years. Again, like a community, like Muslim community and the Sikh community in Canada, we have the Imam, but we don't have a state. We don't have government structure, so they don't have. 
And subhanAllah, after 150 years, they start, the Yahud or the Jewish, to have a form of kingdom under the king Talut in Surah Al-Baqarah. And then after him, King Dawood, Nabiullah Dawood, he became a Malik and Nabiya, he was a king and prophet. And after him, Sulaiman. From that time, they have kind of government structure. But also for a few, few years, from 1000 BC to almost 500, 600 BC. So only 400 years when they have a structure of government or a, a kingdom. They were invaded by the Ashuriyin, the Assyrian, and then after them the Persian, then the Greek, Alexander the Great, then the Roman. So they were few, they, are, they were there for 400 years only where they are a, a state, a country. And then after that the Roman, in the last 300 years of their ruling, they accepted Christianity. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and within uh, after Hijrah 16 years of Hijrah Khalid ibn al-Walid went with the army in, in uh, Mawqa'at al-Yarmouk the Yarmouk battle and he opened Al-Quds and Umar ibn Khattab came and took the keys of Palestine since that day Palestine under Muslim ruling up to now except three periods one during the crusade time the crusaders who came from Europe, they fought Muslim for 200 years, but actually they occupied Palestine and Quds only for 88 years. And then after that, when the collapse of the Ottoman Khilafa, Khilafa al Uthmaniya, the British ruled Palestine from 1970 to 1947, when they gave it to the Yahud at that time. And then Yahud ruling Palestine now from 1947-8, till now 75 years. When you add all the years together, we have the, the Yahud at that time four or five hundred years, the Christian another four or five hundred years, we talk since back then, and Muslims for 1200 years. Muslim ruling Palestine for 1200 years. We didn't talk about the religious aspect because, you know, Muslims and people don't understand this, that for Muslim, all your life is deen. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ إِلِ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Even when you sleep with your wife, it's a deen. You know, you go to the washroom, it's a deen. You eat, deen. You sleep, deen. You know, so all the activities we do. But when they, the other people, whatever Christian or Jew, they talk about the deen, they have different perspective. So they are the one who brought the religious aspect to the conflict. Starting from the names. They said that this land is our father Ibrahim and Ibrahim was a Jew and Allah said Ibrahim was not a Jew. And then they use the term Ardul Mi'ad, the promised land that Allah gave them in the Torah, the promised land. Where this promised land term came? In the Torah. It is not in physics or geology. It's a, in their book. So they using their religious book to enforce it on us and all humanity that this is their right, promised land. And actually, the word Israel, Israel, which is another name of Yaqub again, it's a religious name, even the name of the country. You know, all Arab countries and you know other Muslim countries, it doesn't have a name of a religious. We don't call, we are the Muhammadiyun. We are not related, even we love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we are not related to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are related to Al-Islam, submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We are submitted to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And this is why sometimes you go to some masajid and they put Allah on the right and they put Muhammad on the left, which I don't like. Either you write La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah, fine. But don't, but don't put Muhammad beside Allah. Allah is our master. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best human Allah created, but he's no compared to Allah SWT. You know, we don't compare anyone to Allah SWT. While others think he's son of God, son of God. He's sitting with God. You know, all this uh, uh, belief that we don't agree in Islam. La ilaha illallah. 
So the conflict, the religious conflict, they try to enforce on the case is huge. And then we have uh, 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 the, the, the right of return. Any Jew living anywhere on earth has the right to go to live in Israel. Whatever country you are born in, in whatever you, your business is, whatever, anything, you are a Jew, you have the right to return to Palestine. But the, the Palestinians that were born there, their ancestors were born there, they own the land, they have the keys, Muftah al-Dar, they have the keys for their homes, they have no right to return. We have 14 million Palestinians who are living right now, 6 million of them in the occupied land of Palestine and 8 million outside Palestine. These 8 million has no right to return, according to the Israeli narration of the story, which is again all of it about their religious view. And when you bring Islam in the equation, you are a terrorist. Why? This is politics. But we have Rasulullah Allamana Man Qutila Duna Dinihi Fahua Shaheed, Waman Qutila Duna Mali Fahua Shaheed. ومن قتل دون أهله فهو شهيد ومن قتل دون دمه فهو شهيد If someone killed for the sake of his deen, he's a shaheed. Not even that. If you have money and someone stopped you in the middle of the night and he told you, give me, your, give the money, give me the money and you resisted him and he killed you, you are shaheed. We have another hadith. The Prophet a man asked the Prophet he said, Arayta, if you see someone take my money, uqatilu, should, I, should I fight him and fight with him? Rasulullah said, yes. Qala fa'in qatalani, if he killed me. Rasulullah said, you will be shaheed. Qala fa'in qataltuhu, qala huwa fil naf. If you killed him, even he's Muslim. So to defend your wealth is, is not a religious duty, is not a legal duty, it's a nature. <laughs> It's a normal behavior to defend your property, to defend your family, to defend your wealth, to defend yourself. So people has to know that and bringing the, the, the Torah narration in their belief according to, uh, 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 to what they believe is not uh, uh, right. And then the other thing that's very important that the people of any country when they accept a religion, and after 100 years, 1,000 years, the same people will accept another religion. And then after 1,000 years, the same people will accept another religion. It doesn't mean that they don't belong to the country. When me, we, we accepted Musa salam, accepted Islam according to Musa and according to the Torah, same people. And then our children, we became Jewish. Yahudi, which is Muslims at that time. When Isa came as a salam, we accepted him as Rasul and we accepted Injil as a book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we became Muslims according to Isa. Same people. When Muhammad came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again we became Muslim and accepted Islam according to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and according to Quran. It is not they are different people. This is why the misconception, especially in Egypt, when they say the, the Coptic people. What Coptic? Copti. What Coptic means? Coptic means Egyptian. It doesn't mean Christian. And this is why sometimes it's called the Coptic Church. No, Coptic Church means in English the, the Egyptian Church. But you are Muslim, Muslim Coptic, and they are Christian Coptic. Yeah, Misri Muslim and Misri Masih. But Coptic means Egyptian. And the people of Egypt. They, are, they were Jew, they were Christian, and they became Muslim, same people. Same in India. We have India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. If you put all the more Muslims together, in India we have 300 million Muslims, the largest minority on earth in India. And the Pakistani brothers and the Bengali brothers, they're also Indians. They look like Indians. <laughs> you know. Even Arab came to India, but we don't have all these numbers to cover India, mashallah. So actually, the Indian people 
where whatever religion, Hindus or Sikh, and when the Islam came to them, they accepted Islam. Same people. So this myth that, you know, people are different. Other people came, Arab came, and they invaded Egypt, and Arab came, and they invaded India, and they are the ancestor of Arab. No, they are the same original people who accepted Islam. So the Palestinian people were Jew, were Christian, and they became Muslim. Same owner of uh, of the land. So this is a very important concept. The last point and the last trap they try us to fall in that when you talk about the conflict, when this issue happened, uh, a committee of the Zionists went to Sultan Abdul Hamid, the Khalifa of the Muslim at that time, asked him for Palestine. Why they went to Khalifa? Because they know Muslims has one Khalifa. One governor, and they ask the land from him, and then he refused. And you know what happened? The collapse of the Khilafah in 1917, and so on. And then after that, we have what we study in history. And I remember this: what we studied, in, and the people my age, Asra al Arab al Israeli, the Arab Israeli conflict. So now, from Islamic conflict with Israel or Yehud to Arab conflict with Israel. And then, later, it became what? Palestinian-Israel <laughs> conflict. And now, when you hear the media, what they say? Israel-Hamas conflict, which is not true. It's not true. It's a Palestinian conflict, an Arab conflict, and Muslim conflict. Why all the Muslim countries are upset? Because every Muslim believes this is our land, and we have to defend our brothers. Even, even if I don't, if I didn't go to Palestine, I don't know the streets, I don't know the stores, I don't know anything in Palestine, but I support my brothers. We, we don't only support Muslims. We support any oppressed people. We supported the native of Canada and the native in the United States when they were wiped out completely from this country. By the way, the original settlers, when they came to, from Europe, came to North America, they call it promised land. And they killed the, the native, called them the Canaani, the Canaanian. Same when the Jewish entered Palestine, killing all the original people of their land. Again, all the time, they take the religion as a mean, as a tool to uh, uh, enforce their agenda. And we have to be careful of this. This conflict is between Palestinians and, and I will say, the Palestinian resistance, al muqawm al -Falistini. And this is okay. There is nothing wrong to say that the Palestinian has the right, inshallah, will, will continue with international law, that the Palestinian resistance has the right to defend their country. And it's not about Gaza or West Bank. It is about the occupied land. Don't mention a city and don't mention a group. It is occupied Palestine, and it is the Palestinian resistance. <laughs> Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadi ladhi nustafa wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasul. I'm just jumping quickly because of the time. But now from the international law point of view, we have four important resolutions issued by United Nations. And we should know them in case we debate and we need to convince and, you know, because the media is against us. And the only window, which is not a small window, the, in, the, the circle of influence of every individual of us can do a lot of a change. Alhamdulillah, many Canadians, when they listen and they know the story, they support the, the al-haq and the truth cause, inshallah. In 1947, when the United Nations issued uh, Resolution 181 to divide Palestine, and then after that, uh, another uh, Resolution 19, uh, 194 in, 14, in 1948, these two resolutions are very important in case that we know the situation of Palestine. In the beginning, we refused, as, as Arab Muslims, Arab and Palestinians refused, for many reasons. Number one, Population of, of Yehud, of Jewish or Israelis in the in Palestine was only six percent, and they own only 
maximum 33% of, of, of the land. What United Nations did, they gave them 55% of the land. And you can see the map when you go home, it's, it's, uh, it's a joke. You know, you cannot have two, one country with two pieces and you cannot travel through. Same way what we did in India. They put Pakistan on top of Bangladesh in 1947. And then in 1970s, Bangladesh separated. Because, you know, you can't have two countries and you go from one city to another city by flying. There is no road between two countries. The British, very smart, divide, truth. Same philosophy they do with everyone. But in this resolution that we, we didn't accept, then they came, uh, 194, they said, right of return, haq al-awda. Haq al-awda, as I said before, that uh, Palestinians, for the first time, has the right to return to their country. So, and we still debate up to this moment. If you are Palestinian, you have no right to go back. But by international law, every Palestinian has the right to go back to his country. And Israel, up to this moment, resisting and violating the international law, Resolution 194. And then the debate about what is occupied land. Again, they play, uh, you know, in 1967, when uh, Israel, Israel uh, attacked all the neighbor countries, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, and they uh, uh, occupied West Bank, Gaza, Eastern Jerusalem, Quds Sharqiyah, and they took control of all Quds, and Julian in Syria, uh, uh, United Nations issue a resolution 242. And for the first time, they said is Israel has to draw, to withdraw from the occupied land. And now we see the game they play with us. They put there, occupied land, so the word there, in the English resolution. But actually, uh, sorry, they didn't put there in the English uh, resolution, but actually there was in the French Resolution. So is Israel saying that we can withdraw from any occupied land, any piece, even one acre, because in English, it's no there. But actually, the French and Spanish Resolution is the word there, there, meaning they specified this uh, area. And actually, in 1973, after the war with Egypt and Syria and you know many Arab countries, uh, they have another resolution, 339. And in this resolution, the United Nations, for the first time, specified the occupied land of West Bank and uh, Jerusalem, Gaza, and so on, and Julian. So now, according to the international law, we have occupied land. Now, don't think about Palestine. <coughs> Anywhere on earth, South Africa, all the African countries, Latin America, United States, when uh, they fought General George Washington. He fought the British to free United States from the oppression of the British, and they named the capital to honor his name, Washington. So all the nations, the French resisted the, 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 the German occupation of France, General Charles de Gaulle, nobody called him terrorist. He's a, a freedom fighter. So any land under occupation, people has the right to defend their country. So Resolution 242 and Resolution 339 confirm there is some occupied land. So by definition, the occupied people has the right to defend their country. And this is the fact that everyone who narrated the Israeli narration doesn't want to listen to this. That by international law, the, the Palestinian people in this occupied land, they are not doing anything illegal. And this is a fact that sometimes we feel shy to talk about it. And if you accept it, to Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Ukraine. Few months ago, Putin, Russia, decided to invade Ukraine. And by international law, Ukraine is independent country. 
and Russia is a occupier. What all the European and American did? No, 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 this is wrong. And what they did? They support Ukraine. We still support the Ukraine. And as Muslims, we supported Ukraine, that no one has the right to invade any independent country, because this is what we agreed as human, and this is what United Nations. So why Ukraine has the right to fight Russian because they are under occupation, and the Palestinians has no right to fight back and to resist the Israeli occupation? This is the question. We are calling for peace. We are calling for ceasefire, 100%. But we have also to call for justice. And we have to know that without being angry, without calling to kill anyone or to burn anyone. No, we just need to live in peace and in justice. And I remember a beautiful statement, and I will end with this. One of the priests in, 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 uh, in Britain, I forgot his name, long time ago, but in one of the conflict between Israel Palestine, and, uh, and Palestinian Israel and Arab Israel and Muslims, not Israel and Hamas. And he said, and salam thamara li al adala. Peace is the fruit of justice tree. Again, peace is the fruit of justice tree. You want peace? You have to have justice. If no justice, nobody will be happy. And all the time you have conflict. So we know the solution. And inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-malik, the king the most merciful, Al-Alim, the, the one who knows everything, Al-Hakim, the wise one, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a way out. How? I don't know. But I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as I stand with, with Haq, I will not admit the wrong. I will not support the battle. I'm not talking about myself. But as Muslim, I will stand with Haq. And, you know, death will come. How to die? It's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we will all die. So Muslims has to stand up and stand for the haq, stand for their deen, stand for the international law. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace to Palestine and to Muslim, to Christian, to Yahud, to all sectors, to mankind, to human, to bring peace. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to stop all wars, all fighting. And you know, as the Malaika expected, the Malaika told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created Adam that the, the, the insane, the human will uh, shed blood and corrupt on earth. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring peace and tranquility on this earth. Allahumma ya rabbal alameen, nas'alka fi hadha al-yawm al-azim, an tansura ikhwalana fi Filistin. اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل زمان وفي كل مكان اللهم انصرهم بنصرك وايدهم بتاييدك وتولهم يا ولي وانصرهم يا نصير وقوهم يا قوي واعزهم يا عزيز وملكهم يا ملك وارزقهم يا رزاق وارحمهم يا رحمن وارحمهم يا رحيم اللهم ارحم موتانا موت المسلمين اللهم الحقنا بهم امنين مطمئنين غير مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين